Hello and welcome back to another episode of Notion Bonsai and today we're going to be working on this little Picea. Now we did work on the same species a few videos back but it was a more older and thicker piece of material but this on the other hand is a lot younger piece of material. I'm going to approach it slightly differently and we're going to set it up to become a great bonsai. So this tree essentially has no taper, which means it is the same thickness from the base the whole way to the top of the tree. And in bonsai, it's a desirable trait to have a good trunk with taper. So it's thicker at the base and it sort of tapers the whole way up to the top. And my reasoning for keeping this tree the same thickness from the base to the top is because a lot of the trees that I see here in Ireland, in spruce forests, generally don't have much taper. They do have a little taper as they get to the apex, but from the base to about maybe almost the very tip of the tree, they don't have any taper whatsoever. This is a few pictures that I took in a spruce forest. There was some spruce and then around the area there was also some silver birch. This was just a design choice on my behalf. If I wanted taper in this tree, I could take one of the apex branches point it up and allow that to become the new leader. And with this little young piece of material, we're gonna approach it in a more traditional bonsai way by giving the trunk a nice taper. So the tools that I'm gonna be using today are a chopstick, some wire cutters, some concave branch cutters, twig cutters, and a pair of tweezers. Oh yeah, I don't keep these tools in my tool rule, but these are just ordinary garden scissors. I'm gonna be using these also. Now the reason why I decided to use these garden scissors is because I no longer want to use my nice bonsai scissors on cutting plastic. These are just cheaper scissors that are better suited for this job. I think these cost something like maybe two pounds. So I'm just gonna cut the lip of the pot down. I'm not doing a repot as it's the wrong time of year to repot your tree. You wanna repot for the majority of bonsai trees and including this Picea, is springtime. All I'm doing is exposing the top of the root base. And when I drag the chopstick, I'm not sort of pulling it back and forth like this. I'm pulling it from the trunk to the outside of the pot. So you're always working outwards. That way, if you catch any roots, you're also raking them in the direction that you want them to grow in. And it's completely fine at this time of year to remove the surface roots and the tree will have plenty of roots below here to survive the winter. I actually quite enjoy root work on bonsais. I know some people don't like it, but I'm really looking forward to spring when I can give all my trees a nice repot and a good soil. Just gonna cut here, cut the roots on the surface to get them out of the way. And if when you cut the pot down a little, you still don't see a nabari, you can cut it down a little more. As long as you leave maybe this much root, the tree will be okay. As you can see here, there's actually some roots coming out of the bottom of the pot. It's okay to cut them off also. And I'm gonna to continue to look for a nice nabari. Trees this young don't really have that thick of a nabari, but you will find the beginning of one. Not only am I looking for a nabari, even if I don't find a suitable one, that can be developed later. But what I'm also doing is revealing more of the trunk. And that allows us to not have to take away as many lower branches. But generally in the bottom third of a bonsai, you don't really want any branches aesthetically. Kind of need that negative space at the bottom to give it the impression of being an older tree. I suppose these bonsai conventions, like not keeping branches at the bottom of a tree like this, you can break that sort of concept and oftentimes when concepts and bonsai are broken you actually get more interesting and unique trees so i've dug down quite a bit now i'm just going to print off here i'm quite happy with what i revealed just going to squish this down now before we wire the tree i would just like to point out that this branch here is quite thick in comparison to the trunk and it could be seen as a branch that's competing with the trunk line and one option is to remove this branch. And then after we remove this branch, we could then wire all these little other thinner branches downwards to create sort of that classic forest-like tree. But that's one option. Another option, which I think is a more preferable option, would be to remove this main leader and allow this side branch that we were gonna remove before and let that grow and let it become the new leader of the tree. When you look at the movement of the tree from the base and we follow it up, then this would become the new leader. And by removing this main trunk, the tree doesn't go from thicker to the same thickness. The tree then goes from thick here to thinner up here. 
and that's essentially how you get taper in a bonsai. And to cut this branch, I'm gonna use this, which is the concave branch cutter or the hybrid cutter. I got this as a gift for my 24th birthday recently from my parents, very grateful. I'm gonna just shorten it to here for now. I'm gonna come in even closer. Now I haven't got the cut as flush as I'd like it. So I'm gonna just clean up this area by removing these little needles and branches that are starting to bud back here, just so I can see the area better. It's always a good idea to clean out areas that you're gonna wire or prune. It helps you see what's going on. I'd like to cut that nice and flush. Let's see. I'm gonna remove this branch also as I think it's in the way. I see his back bud very easily, so there's no really worry for me on removing these. So I'm thinking how can I get this to become the new leader without it looking too bulbous in this area. I can still come in with these concave cutters and cut even more. I'm just gonna seal this with a little bit of cut putty. I'm just gonna put this on the wound here. And you wanna make sure that your finger's wet whenever you push against the cut putty. Now I know I keep repeating myself when I say this, but cut putty is antifungal. It's used for keeping moisture in the tree and keeping moisture out of the tree. And it just helps the healing process when there's a wound on a bonsai. So this is what I've removed off of the tree so far. This was the apex and this was a little side branch. And now just to prepare the tree to wire it, we're gonna put wire up the main trunk here. I'm gonna remove all of the sort of inside growth and any back buds that are sort of growing in the elbows of branches. So the needles that I'm removing are the ones that's sort of growing on the main trunk. That's where wire's gonna go, so it's gonna be crushed anyways. I'm just gonna pluck them out with my fingers. And there's also some areas with back budding. I'm gonna take the scissors to this area. If you pluck this, it could tear the branch or it could end up running down the trunk. Now I know that I'm going to be wiring this branch here. So I'm also gonna remove some of the needles on that at the bottom. And as I clean the tree, aside from removing the needles on the main trunk, I'm also removing the needles at the base of the primary branches that emanate from the trunk. So like down here and around here. So now I've got the tree cleaned fairly well. You can actually see a lot more of what's going on in terms of the branches, structure of the tree. And I've actually noticed at the back of the tree here, there's three branches emanating from the one spot on the trunk. And if I keep all of these branches, the area on the trunk in which these are attached to will swell and you'll get what's known as inverse taper. That's where you'll get a bulge in that area. And in bonsai, that's not quite a desirable trait. Of course, if you want that, keep the branches by all means and get a nice knobbly trunk that's sort of unconventional. But I'm gonna to decide to remove two of these branches and keep one. I'm gonna explain why I'm removing this one. This one is quite close to the one below it. So if I wire that down and this is wired down, they're quite sort of similar to each other. So I know I won't be needing this one. Now it's whether to keep this one or this one. I'm deciding to keep this one because this one here is quite close already to the one below it. There's a very small space there. So I'm gonna remove that one. Now you will get a lot of sap on your hands as you pluck these needles and clean the tree. As Pisces are very sappy and sticky trees to work with, the smell off them is so great, I, I love it. And if you like the smell of spruce, you can actually make tea from the needles. If you have maybe a teaspoonful of the needles, put them in a mug, add some hot water, wait maybe three minutes, then strain it off. You'll have a drink that's both full of minerals and very rich in vitamin C. Years ago, they used to use spruce needles and make tea from them in that way to prevent scurvy. Anyways, the two wires that I'm gonna be using today are two and a half millimeter wire and one millimeter wire. Now, preferably, if you have one and a half millimeter wire, I find that works a little better for holding branches. One millimeter for me seems to be a little bit too thin. So my next wire, which is gonna be coming in the mail soon, is gonna be one and a half millimeter. This one millimeter is just too bendy. So to wire the tree, I'm just gonna measure it. Take the wire cutters. I'm gonna stab the wire into the soil and wrap around. And I want each wrap to be about 45 degrees. Try not to trap the branches. So sometimes you sort of have to go off that 45 degree rule to get around a branch. You'll really find that the areas that you've missed, you will notice because as you try and put wire down, there's needles in the way. So it's no odds just to go and clean up as you wire. 
Now as I get to the end here, instead of trying to force it around this little thin delicate part at the top, I'm just gonna cut it. I'm gonna take a piece of wire and make a loop out of it. And I'm gonna use this to mark the front of the tree. For the front I've chosen here. For the reason being that I can see the entire trunk line the whole way up. Got good branches on the left and right and some back filler branches to create depth. I know I can't see the nabari, but that can be developed in the future. So I'm gonna mark here as the front. I'm gonna keep this in mind as I work on the tree. Now when you bend the trunk, it's good to have a branch, like this one here, on the outside of the bend. If it's on the inside, you'll get swelling inside and it will give you a strange taper. So now that I know this branch is in the inside, it can actually be removed. I'm just gonna give that a better bend. There's a branch here that I'd like on the outside of a bend. So I'm gonna whip the tree back around this way and we've got a slight movement. I don't want it too dramatic, but it is a good idea to give Pisces like this an extra little bend, sort of bend them slightly beyond the point that you want the tree to be. As I find with these particular Pisces, is they don't really want to hold themselves in place after you take the wire off. They sort of want to revert back to sort of a straight up tree by pushing them that little bit extra. It really helps you set a good shape in it. Okay, so now that I've got some movement in the tree, I'm not too worried about this apex that's sort of flapping about. I'm just gonna allow this to elongate and grow. All I'm really wanting with this tree is to get movement from the base as it tapers into the next part. Now to wire these two branches together. I know I say this quite a lot, but the general rule in bonsai when wiring is to wire one branch to the other. That's these two wired together. And I'm gonna continue to do this for all these little tiny branches the whole way up to the apex. All right, so at this point, I don't really need to wire these apex-like branches because they're very short, and if I do wire them, they're probably not gonna set, they'll just grow. So this is the front of the tree. Later, this part will come maybe forward like that. I just wanna let it grow. Now to wire the branches, I'm gonna pull them down from the elbow, just right in here. Sometimes when people wire branches down, they go like this, not, not this dramatically, but they'll bend it maybe from in here like that. I prefer it when the branches come from the elbow, so it's good to put your finger on the elbow and take it down like that. Then you can pull it up from the middle like this. Same here, down from the elbow, up. Now all I'm doing is mimicking what I see when I'm in a forest. In older trees, because the branches, imagine a weight on the end of here, because the branch is so heavy and it has so much foliage, it pulls it all down from the trunk. But then because the branch itself wants to get to the light, at the ends, all the foliage springs up towards the sun. Same with these other branches. Even though they're small, same thing applies. To make the tree look older, pull down. It's good to wire right to the ends of branches so that you can get it to perk up at the end. I think what I'm gonna do for the apex here is fold it to the right like this. So the tree becomes a lot shorter in height. Imagine this isn't here. It's quite a nice tree, right? And see this little branch here? I'm gonna point that up. And I want this to become the new leader of the tree. So it goes from thick, then we cut it, the big branch off. It goes from sort of like large, medium, and then small, this little one here. So I'm gonna allow this to develop and get the tree healthy. But in a later date, I'm gonna cut this off and that will give us Nice tree here. We could also develop this into a side branch if we didn't want to cut it off like this. Maybe we could just shorten it. Like that. Looks pretty good. So as you develop your bonsai, it's a good idea to not get stuck in your ways of thinking because you could find something that looks better. And I'm quite happy by finding this. I want the branches at the bottom to be the widest branches and have the tree triangular. There's just one little flaw, which is this branch here. It goes out further than this one. So I'm gonna shorten it to maybe here. I'm gonna use the wire cutters to do this. You can even have the tree planted at an angle so that the apex is off center from the base of the tree. Or if you prefer, you could have it, you know, like a formal upright. But I prefer for this one to be an informal upright. And I've just noticed, this is bizarre, my front has changed without me even realizing. This is where we placed the wire as the front. It's completely different now. So if I take this out, switch it around this way, I much prefer this is the front. So the front will also change. This would be a good planting angle, but I feel like this still extends too far to be symmetrical. 
Oh, that's much better. Let's dress it up with some moss. And there you guys have it. That was my approach to this little tiny Picea. I'm gonna leave the wire to slightly bite in as this tree tends to struggle with staying in place. So if you let the wire sort of bite in very slightly, then take it off, it has more chance of staying in the position that you put it in. Come spring, I'm gonna fertilize it with a high nitrogen fertilizer. I'm gonna give it a repot, possibly, depending on how well the roots are doing in this little pot that it's in. And over the coming years, the tree will become more ramified, it'll grow more back buds, and it'll grow more branches, secondary branches, that we can then come in and restyle again to give this tree a more full look. Please let me know in the comments what you thought about this tree and my approach to it. And if you have any suggestions, I'm always open to new ideas. And now before I end off this video, I want to check out what Picea tea tastes like. Oh wow, it smells very good. It smells exactly like the tree. I just wonder, does it taste like the tree? I thought it was gonna be disgusting. It's... Oh wow, that's actually really good. Let me know in the comments if you tried this. And on that, thank you so very much for watching. Mm -hmm.